Oh, I felt like I was waiting for ages. <laughs> Sorry, oh, it's okay. Is the is the voice coming through? Okay, it's a bit cracking on my end. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you fine. Yeah. Tika, awesome, awesome. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. How are you? Hanji, a very busy few days, but Maraj Garpa, all good. So we, we had a lunch time. So I've told everyone that I'm going live yes. with my besties. So wait out. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I'm glad you could make it. Um, it's good. I'm excited for obviously um, what's going to be spoken about today. So um, yeah. So how should we start this? We haven't planned this, by the way, guys. We're just kind of going to do the top of our heads. <laughs> and that's the best thing, you know, sometimes. That's the best thing, even uh, where I am. So this is a Naval Chaplaincy Conference for three days. And all the chaplains are in the room. And uh, so it wasn't planned. They, they asked me this morning to talk from a Sikhi perspective this morning. Nothing planned. Um, no theory. And then I really enjoyed that. It, it's almost like you're speaking from your heart and not making things up. And sometimes that they're the best thing. So no worries at all. Let's just do it. It's spontaneous as well, isn't it? And sometimes yeah. when it's trying to say the best things rather than planning yeah. and that next, you know. Um, but yeah, um, how should we start this? Do you want to ask me something first or should I ask you? You know, whichever way, whichever way, absolutely fine. I'll start then. So um, uh, previously I did ask my followers uh, what they would want to ask me. Um, and I thought today we could get a couple of questions out of the way. So my first question, I'll ask you one, then you can ask me after that if you want. Um, is uh, one, someone asked me how to be more confident, right? Uh, so you can give your view on that and then maybe I can give mine. Uh, so how how can we become more confident? So you you would like me to give my view on that? Yeah, so I think what is confidence? Uh, first of all, if, if you look from uh, that angle, is that your ability to do something that you want to do or maybe some of the responsibilities that are given to you and your ability to do that. Does confidence mean that you're never nervous? You're not anxious about it, you know, not at all. It's very natural to feel a little nervous, a little anxious about things that we do and we come out of our comfort zone and do that. So that's absolutely fine. But the matter of the fact that we still do it, we take that first step. Yes, I'm going to give myself a chance to be able to achieve that and without limiting ourselves basically. So when we say uh, I lack confidence, it's, I feel, and it's just my opinion, it's my opinion, it's not just my opinion, it's my opinion, <laughs> because it matters. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, what I feel is that we limit ourselves by saying that I can't do that. Says who? Who says that you can't do that? It's our own limiting belief when we say that I can't do that. Have you tried it? Okay, yes, I tried, but I failed. And one of the languages we use very commonly is that there is no such thing as failure. There is no such thing as failure at all. There is only feedback in life. And you you do something, you attempt to do something. Uh, you try, you attempt it. It might go very well. It might not go very well. And life is about trial and error as well. Uh, you try something, it works. It doesn't work. Okay, I'm going to uh, use a different strategy. And then if it's something, the outcome is not something that you desired, then now it's going to go back again, a different attempt and in a different way. But giving up is not a choice, especially for Khalsa. Uh, and and you, you all they are, but they are. Uh, giving up is not actually um, an option for anyone because what are we going to get out of that? So when we talk about the confidence, it's very much about giving yourself that golden opportunity to try something that you're not tried before 
and then see what happens. And if the result is not the same that you uh, desired for, then take that as a feedback, learn from it and go from there. But how would and you think? The thing you said about the whole, you know, sometimes you're not comfortable with doing it, uh, but you know, you should keep trying sort of thing. There was a, uh, something I, I read uh, a while ago and it said, get comfortable being uncomfortable. And that mm. I, I love, I was like, whoa that makes sense you know and it's true like to be and um, to go ahead in life right and to um do better um to be uncomfortable actually helps like because you're obviously you, you're doing something you've never done before you, there might be risks there might be fear anything and that might make you uncomfortable but then it will help you grow it will help you be more wise Right, and that's what I've learned anyway. Um, so my uh, answer on that, uh, obviously that bit, and my answer to obviously, how can we become more confident would be, um, I like to talk from personal experience. So something that I would experience, not kind of guess or what someone else has been through, just because I can explain it a bit better. And um, I think that what everything you said was spot on. You know, you say that, uh, even if you fail it's okay you know that shouldn't knock your confidence and that I think goes for anything in life so something goes wrong or you've taken the wrong road or you've got the wrong exit even things like that it's okay don't let that knock you ruin your day and ruin your confidence. it's it's okay to fail as long as you get back up and I think that's the important bit getting back up um, and I think it's usually fear that ruins our confidence so you can't let fear override because i think then it's hard to become more wise it's hard to grow all these personality traits i feel they all you know they are connected um and, and it's I interesting you, you use the word fear um, it's a fear of what you know yes we are fearful uh, but one of the biggest things that have come recently in my way when people talking to me is fear of what will people say look she failed uh, yeah. and then that then makes me think that okay how long we are going to live for people and what they they think about uh, me and you or anybody else if they are the ones who have come to help you mentor you coach you then yeah of course think about them if not you have to fulfill your dreams and whatever that takes um, yeah, completely understand, you know, it's, as you said, you know, get comfortable, be uncomfortable. And right now it could be uncomfortable to sit here and do this talk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so what, you know, what will happen? Yeah, there will be people here who don't like us. Uh, there will be people here who like yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, regardless, we are not here to prove ourselves to anyone, or you like us or not like us. We are here. Um, for anybody who is there, maybe maybe not thinking that self-worth and not motivated enough, even if it helps that one soul, it's job done. And that's the purpose. We are not here to please anybody. Simple as that. Of course. I mean, that's a good point you said about, you know, people pleasing, basically. We shouldn't be living our life trying to please people around us, even if it is family. Sounds harsh, but it's true. Um, you know, there's obviously there's a point where you want to kind of respect your family and you want to listen to them especially if you live with them they pay the bills you know you got to kind of listen to them and be, you know be on their rules but um at the end of the day you still have to do what makes you you happy you know what you're content with um because yeah. or, um it always goes back to that's what's going to help you grow not being confident will help you grow make you more wise and so will you know you're doing something you know is right for you and it's hard sometimes it's hard people have i know people around me who lack confidence in um actually doing what they feel happy with and they're more living life um on the basis of others and it's sad you know it's sad to see that but it, obviously the more you keep following others and the more you're doing things for other people and doing it because of them and not because of yourself then obviously down the line it's, it's going to lead to depression negative thoughts and obviously all the downside of things 
basically. Um, yeah, it's interesting when you when you say the thoughts and the negative thoughts, because more and more I'm becoming aware of that. How actually, uh, how powerful these thoughts are, whichever positive or negative, they are they are so powerful, and it's you know the research says that on an average day we get you know sixty to eighty thousand thoughts, and research also says that eighty to ninety percent of those thoughts are toxic and negative. And then if we do not become aware of our own thoughts, then actually yeah. we are creating our destiny, we are building, and that's our foundation. Yeah. So that's our foundation of our future. Because who doesn't want a bright future? We all everybody says, I want this in future, I want to be happy, my future should be bright. But then think about it. What's the sort of foundation we are giving that to future? Because who is going to create that future for us? Who is going to create that future for you? If my future is now built on the foundation of all these negative thoughts, you know, then actually, what is is my future going to be positive? Yeah? yeah. And then it's about time that we become more conscious and more aware of these this thing called thoughts. And Gurbani talks about this all the time. All the time. You know, Mante Kam Karna, Bande Khoj, Dilhar Rose. Yeah. But you are very uh, aware of the outwardly things, which is, which is great. That has role uh, in itself, and very important. But then we forget that actually, you know what? Um, it's hand in hand. Am I even keeping a guard? Uh, am I even aware of what I'm thinking and what my thoughts are? So absolutely uh, vital for us to build that future, that confidence that you said and who you want to be, uh, not only in future, but today as well, to start looking more consciously on those thoughts. But that leads me to one question as well for you, if I may ask. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So I know that you have been gone through some personal challenges over the last few years as well. And, and the challenges were such that it, it can break you. Yeah. And then you think, okay. It did. What's, yeah what's, what's the point yeah so again looking from that thoughts level and that confidence level uh what did you do to stand up to to be where you are today and not allow all those circumstances um to drown you basically um well it's uh obviously like you said I have gone through uh, a rough patch um, in the last year or so. And, you know, I am in a better place now. And I'd say what helped me stand up was, first of all, was Gurbani. Um, Barney helped me a lot. I think if I didn't have, I, we have Guru Maharaj at home too. Um, and obviously if we didn't have Guru Maharaj and there was no such thing as Guru Granth Sahib Ji, I don't know how I would have got through it and um, I, I'm not even sure myself but I think obviously Gurbani was one Keith I feel like when I'm singing it takes me to a different place right so singing that really helped and these are just a few tips I want my followers your followers to take in as well if they are going through something right now or they have been or you know, if something happened in the future I want them to kind of take this on and hopefully this would help them too. Obviously, um, for me, I used to speak to Guru, Guruji a lot as well. I used to sit there with it was crying, whatever it was, with lots of tissues and, you know. And um, I stood up, basically. I just told myself, I'm going to give myself some time to cry. I am going to grieve. And that's not weak of me. So anyone who grieves, anyone who cries over something, a friendship breaking, family problems, relationship, anything like that, I want you to know if you cry about it, it does not make you weak. In fact, you're, it's okay to cry. And if you can admit that, okay, it's like you have to accept your feelings. That's another thing. We can't try and ignore that. Oh no, I'm very strong, I'm fine. But inside it's, it's hurting, you know, it's a heavy feeling that makes it work, worse and that prolongs the process of healing in any situation yeah. and for me it was i would accept that i'm sad i'm accepting that i was hurt or whatever the words were and what helped me it sounds a bit 
I don't know what it sounds, but you know, I used to write it down as a journal, my feelings that, okay, mm -hmm. today I feel this angry and this sad. And, and it helps, you know, and you see and you think, and somehow when I'm writing this, like I'm processing it all. And um, over time, I've even listened to motivation speeches on YouTube uh, and even read motivational quotes. And most of all, um, well, I had this kind of time uh, during my hardship uh, was I didn't want to continue with my combat call. And that is the truth, right? And I'm not afraid to admit that. Um, I didn't want to continue, but I did continue. And I kind of pushed through that pain. I, I was like, no, I am not going to let this situation or these people or these judgment people push me to a point where I'm just collapsed because that's what they would want. And that helped me actually me I got motivated more I started doing more and even days I didn't want to go gym and I was like no I feel too sad no I told myself get up and go and when I was at the gym I'd feel great and it was like you know what I'm glad I pushed through it so sometimes it's about pushing through the pain so yes you have a stage where you're crying and you feel upset you need to feel those emotions then there's going to be a time give yourself a week or so like with me it was like a week of um absolute depression uh, after that got myself back up and i was back on it again you know i was eating properly and then and it would come back you know it would hurt me but it was okay i wasn't hard on myself i wasn't hard that are you that again it's okay you know we're human we're gonna get sad but it's about tackling it's about combating that negative emotion that comes let it come and tell yourself you're not gonna let that kind of knock you for six uh at, let's say um but yeah that that that's i think those mm. are the few things i did that helped me get up and it's a confidence thing as well what we spoke about earlier i feel like i am confident enough to be like no you can knock me but you won't keep me down that's always been my thing <laughs> you will keep and you know yeah. I have the that people don't know this or well they might know this but we get the you know, horrible comments sometimes, and you probably get it as well, Benji, like, you know, and then people just criticize or they'll pick on things and anything they will find and they will want to kind of judge on that. And it's like, you know what? It's okay because I'm not here worried about you. You're more worried about me. And, you know. Um... Yeah. <laughs> That's just so amazing. And I loved when you said, you know, you can knock me down, but you can't keep me down. I don't know whether you said it, but I heard that. It's such an important and, and profound phrase, absolutely, in the sense that, yes, and as you said, if people are doing it on purpose, I hope, I hope we are bringing our conscious levels up now, at least in this generation, and not necessarily keep putting other people down because this is one life. Work on yourselves rather than putting your focus and energy on putting other people down. But even if, you, if they do that, you know, either we make them win, yeah, or actually we keep going. And obviously, the more we allow people, such people to win, we are making, we are creating more of those people uh, in this world. And it's not only a responsibility for yourself, it's a collective responsibility. First, you need to show up for yourself, but then you're also doing that for for collectively, for everyone, every single soul uh, in this universe. And this is such a powerful thing to be because we do, we do knock down, by the way, we do get knocked down uh, because that's, yeah, exactly. Because at some point they will get knocked down and that's the truth. Yeah. We, you want to explain that, it just happens. It happens. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, one of the phrases I use is sad is not bad. Uh, yeah. sad is not bad because yeah uh, it was, and it's it's a human emotion but when we allow ourselves to drown in that uh, and, and I completely appreciate that, that there might be some people who are listening to this and, and they are feeling trapped in their own emotions feelings and circumstances for now what yeah. will happen if all all those listeners today I, I in a way I challenge you politely PR than all what will happen if you choose to stand up today? What will happen? What's going to happen? And you will only know this if you try that today. So those who have locked themselves in a room, 
or they think the the world has ended and there's no one who looks after them cares for them loves them they, they, there's no self worth no self love what will happen if you do love yourself yeah. um and you will only know that by trying that and people celebrate women's day today um i i say every moment is women's moment and so is men's you know i'm not saying that women are anyway uh, it's it's not a feminine talk but it's about recognizing to recognize that self worth that we all have every single one of you is a warrior just recognize that yeah it's true like everyone's a warrior and it's funny cuz some of the things we're talking about i've used some of the i've used these for my uh, posts so you know about okay. about a what of of i think i posted a picture in there as well that you know we're all warriors it's just about letting that warrior self out and um, sometimes yeah. we can look at ourselves and be like oh no i can't and i think that's what you mentioned earlier as well uh saying that you can't well you've already failed 50% that you know you've failed like you can't say you can't you can so i rather you change the wording so for everyone who is going through something in life right now don't say you can't get through it or you can't do it how about say i find it difficult right now but i will do it because like i said it's okay to accept the fact that you're you're sad going through so, something so, yeah. um, but um yeah like I'm absolutely yeah. No, 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 no. Absolutely, uh, loving the energy, loving the the talk. Absolutely. I also I have a colleague here, uh, Janice. So I I'm, I can't even remember when was the last time I saw you, Janice. Would you like to come here? And uh, so, Hello. <laughs> yeah. So it's been it's Hello. been uh, probably a good few years. Yes. Yeah. So Sanmuk. So she's Sanmuk. And um, so when so we were. in the conference we were texting each other <laughs> so oh, don't tell anybody yeah. <laughs> no so we were we were texting each other yeah. so i asked so janice is here and it would be great if janice can give her perspective as well on um so how long you been um partner in the forces 13 years 13 um, years yeah I'm a, i'm a methodist minister which is a protestant uh church yeah as opposed to the anglicans and um, and i've been doing this since I, i started studying in 2000 and we were just talking a little bit that even though Well there was one period in the navy as a chaplain yeah, where right. for 6 years I was the only woman but oh, I still right. still suffered well, like some discrimination like yeah yeah it was I was the queen bee the chaplain <laughs> yeah I do sometimes still suffer discrimination because there are uh, men ordained men who don't uh, recognize the ordination of women um but yeah. actually that's that's maybe another day's conversation um i am quite international i was born in south africa i grew up in rhodesia and botswana and swaziland because my father was a mining engineer and then uh went to university in natal met my ex-husband moved to botswana moved back to johannesburg and then lived in malaysia before i realized oh, because wow. my grandmother was scottish i could okay. come and live here all right um yeah so uh yeah so lived in eating week i was sent to cambridge to study theology and then i was in high wickham and then i joined the navy at the yeah, age right. of 42 so awesome. <laughs> and we were having this interesting chat of a coffee break earlier and because i was sharing some of the challenges that i might have faced because of being a sikh in a very uh, christian dominating uh, world where i am and then yeah. janice came to me and she started sharing i think it's that instant connection isn't it when a female talks to female and the challenges come yeah. in and Is janice true? we, we, we actually went, you went to yeah we actually went to fill a water bottle and we stood in the corner <laughs> and chatted about our own uh, so i think it would be great if you what you were talking to me earlier in the break if you if you you know um, how how because you face lots of challenges and mm. hardships and we are not against by the way we're not against anyone not against males or not against any particular no. community oh, yeah, but it's just yeah. a personal experience a personal experience i shared and personal experience that jenny's uh, is going to share hopefully but that doesn't necessarily mean that everyone is bad or everybody does that but this is some yeah. of the challenges that we all face i think um because it all started with confidence um when i first realized because we in the church we realized that we're called by god to do this ministry when i first realized everybody laughed at me because i i cannot do public speaking 
Well, I, I couldn't. I used to cry mm -hmm. if anybody said to me to get up and do a speech. So they were like, how are you going to do this? And I knew that that challenge mm -hmm. meant that I, I had to do it. It was part of the call. And I'm quite lucky because I wear these long black robes. So when I do these really big, um, like I've done some really big military funerals, 600 people, and my, sh my legs are shaking, yeah. <laughs> but I, I wear the robes. And I've learned, you know, even as um, at one stage, the only woman, and um, people were like all staring. When I, you can, Mandeep will tell you, mm -hmm. we've got 60 people in there and 99% of them are men. There's myself, Mandeep okay. and another woman. Yeah. So yeah. when I walk in, I'm different straight away. And I just have learned to hold my head high and think I, I, I'm allowed to be here just like anyone else. Yeah, of course. And the other thing we were talking about was um, pain and overcoming it and mm. uh, being locked in your room. and. I have a writer that I absolutely adore. He's unfortunately he's died now. He was a Catholic priest and his name is Henri Nouwen. So it's H-E-N-R-I and then his surname is N-O-U-W-E-N. -E you can get loads of his okay. quotes online. Okay. He talks about the wounded healer. And he says this, he said, unless we are prepared to open up our wounds and share them with others, mm. we cannot heal. It's like yeah. when you have a pus yeah. cut, you have to cut the pus and you have to put salt in that wound, which is the most painful thing. Mm. But I, as a South African, recommend it. <laughs> and, then, and then you heal. And, yeah. and sharing your pain is the best way to heal. Wow. It's true. That's like, amazing, you, know, you, you do hear like about when you kind of keep your pain in and um, you hear it a lot. You're like, you know how you always say to somebody, like say if you ask your friend, what's wrong? And they're like, Oh, nothing. Oh, nothing. When you know there's something wrong, and you know the, what yeah. the next response is usually, you can't keep it inside you. You can't. You know that. That's what I usually say because you know you can't because that will come out another way then, and it might come out in a more dangerous Absolutely. way. You know. Yeah. yeah. And this is what um, we've been yeah. talking here. Yeah. Because I wrote, morning, I wrote um, a dissertation when I did my MA, and it was yeah. called "He Could Hide His Hound, But He Could Not Hush Its Voice," and that's mm. a quote from the Hound of the Baskervilles. And basically, okay. there was this big ugly dog that was being hidden in a cellar, but you could hear oh. that evilness of the sound at night, mm. which scared everybody. And this yeah. is what happens when people don't share their pain. It yeah. Then, and I'm sure you've, we've all encountered people where you just perhaps walk into a supermarket you mm. ask for something from the counter and the person just goes for you mm. and like yeah. what's all that about yeah. and then if you if you have the opportunity not always you you go into their story and you realize that they've just had the worst two months yeah. of their life and unfortunately exactly. you're the you're the thing that's that's made them do that so and they don't even um, know sometimes isn't no, it? That, no that, that, because and that's because, the ugliness yeah it. because we're so conditioned by this word to again that mm. you know man up woman up mm, yeah, yeah. and and how mm. can a person of faith particularly be a weak mm. you know we, yeah. we say that yeah. look depression you know like yeah. these common phrases that how can you feel the pain and mm. and this is why sometimes i'm there to say this that the faith communities suffer the most because yeah. they're not allowed to be themselves they're not allowed to open up and there is a lot of judgment around uh, who you judgment. are yeah. and yeah and that's yeah. why i think if as a society if we can create that space for people to at least release that and as, as you said Janice that talk about it and you know come together as a group and that's what we do in one healing all the time yeah. come together as a group and actually you know I'm looking at my at my wound now and I'm going to care for it and nurture it and yeah. not allow anybody else to scratch it and I'm I'm ready to now heal if that makes sense yeah, yeah. yeah. and but I do have I do have uh, something else that Henri know and um share or wrote and which i try and share a lot especially because when i was a minister with my churches most yeah. of my congregations were elderly people over 60 and sometimes they get really frail they get to the 80s and they they can't do the things they used to do like they would uh, maybe do the shopping for their neighbor or take them cups of tea they become so frail they can't do it and they get really angry with themselves and and they, mm. they don't want to accept any help and Henri know yeah. said this and this i like really the most important thing to remember is that how dare we be the one always doing the good to the other? Mm. It has to be because you always feel good about yourself because you're helping other people. Mm. However, you never get that person a chance to feel good about themselves <laughs> by allowing them to yeah. help you. 
So you need to graciously accept the help from other people because you're actually helping them grow in their confidence and that's don't true. always be the one to help. And that's, that's true, yeah. a really, really good bit. Absolutely. Yeah. We all need to finish up um, now, though. Um, it's been really, really good. Um, I love this talk, and I feel like we can talk more and more, and maybe we should uh, join again, definitely. Thank you so much as well to our chaplain here <laughs> for joining us. Um, it was a pleasure, really. Um, and Deep Benji, thank you very much as well. Um, and obviously, thank we you. did this talk, as we all know, because it is um, International Women's Day. Whoop! Yes, so obviously, we decided, <laughs> you know, to do a talk. And I hope this was beneficial. And like I said earlier as well, before Mundi Benji joined the live, that it's not just for women. This is not, this talk isn't just for women, it's for everybody. You know, it's for the guys as well. If this can help you, if any of the advice we've given can help you, then please, uh, you know, let us help you and take that advice on board. Um, but yeah, so is there anything else before you want to go? Anything you want to say? <laughs> It's good to meet you. I'm very pleased. I didn't even know it was International Women's Day. It's one of those things I forgot. Mandeep told me. And when I picked up my phone, because I'm away from my husband, he'd sent me yeah. Happy International Women's Day. So my husband Aww. remembered. I thought it was really sweet. <laughs> so I hope more of the men in your lives will remember today. It's all about supporting each other. And, yeah. um, you know, be, be more of who you are. Be more of your authentic self. And this is yep. about time. Thank you, G. Yep. And uh, that's it really, like the more obviously we support each other, not just women, but everybody, whether it's in the community, outside the community, everyone, you know, the world should be together. We should be um, helping one another, loving one another, caring for one another. And this world will be such a more beautiful place. And even if it's not the world internationally, just nationally or even in your area, if you can just be positive and, you know, keep that positivity up between yourselves you know, that would be great. That would honestly be something I'd love to see and I'd want to feel, and I'm sure everyone in the world would want to feel that way. So, um, but yeah, I hope we can make that little difference and um, keep our positivity up. Um, yeah. <laughs> love to meet you. <laughs> um, Angie, thank you very much. And um, we'll end it here then. Okay, G, thank okay, you. Okay, G, bye, 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 bye,